Dive in the deep end, it's time to defend your movie. Hello friends and welcome to this week's episode of Defending Your Movie. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. Uh, so today, you know, we're looking at one of maybe the first comedy of the podcast. I can't remember if I've actually covered a comedy before. But uh, we are looking at a movie from the mid-2000s. I think this is 2004-ish, somewhere around that range. Uh, that At the time when it came out, I kind of just, you know, I watched it. It brushed over me, and I was like, yeah, that was fine. And I never really thought about it again. But uh, today we were talking about Without a Paddle, starring Matthew Lillard, Seth Green, and Dax Shepard. Uh, you know, a movie, you know, the mid 2000s was kind of an interesting time for movies, uh, you know, post 9-11, there was a lot of just way different stuff kind of coming out and, you know, people kind of throwing stuff against the wall to see what would work. But this was, you know, feels like your kind of run of the mill comedy from that era. But I think it's one that is amplified by its cast. And I remember, you know, checking out at the time and thinking it's okay, but I hadn't seen it in a long time, like probably since it came out. Uh, so I sat down with my guest today, uh, Nick Wolf, and we we sit here and discuss this film, and um, it's it's like a lot better than I remember. Like I really enjoyed revisiting this movie. Uh, it's a really fun comedy that I think is worth checking out, and I do think the cast goes a long way to making it so good. And you know, at the time, I remember thinking it was just okay, but I think now, like revisiting it and like noticing just the camaraderie of the cast and stuff like that. I, I think it is kind of like on paper, it might've been a more kind of just plain movie, but I do think it is pushed forward a little bit by the people involved. And it, it ended up just being a really fun movie and totally worth revisiting and kind of a perfect little time capsule of the era of which it came. Uh, but before we get into the show, let's get the plugs out of the way. We do have our social media links uh, at Defending Movie on Twitter and Instagram. We also have our Patreon at patreon.com slash Defending Your Movie. You know, I know there's not a lot of content on the Patreon right now, but I do have some stuff coming up soon. Uh, some more video editing videos that you can only get uh, on the Patreon. For example, I edited the Snyder Cut down to a three-hour film, and I recorded the editing process of that, and you can follow the edits on the Patreon, and I'm trying to find a way to host, uh, like, member-only screenings that'll probably be through Discord, so keep your eye out on for that. I'm still kind of... I think I figured out how to do it, I just have to test it. Uh, I also have edits of um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm working on an edit for Thunderball, and I'm going to record that whole process because that was a movie we talked about on the show. And I think that's going to be something going forward is, you know, I'm going to be working on some kind of fan edits of movies and just record the process. And you'll be able to watch those on the Patreon. Um, also still working on getting some, you know, movie commentary tracks together, uh, possibly some exclusive episodes. So be sure to check out that. Uh, we also have our merch store at belowthecollar.com slash defending your movie. Get some t-shirts. Literally, as I am recording this intro, I just finished uh, two new t-shirt designs inspired by uh, Marvel movie titles. So, you know, look for those very soon on the Below the Collar store. And then, as always, you can save 21% on your order at thecrypticcloset.com if you use promo code DEFEND at checkout. Save 21% on your order. Hey, Black Friday's coming up. Maybe you can get some better deals. Um, you know, check out some really cool horror-themed merchandise and some parody designs and stuff like that. A lot of really great stuff over there, and they just dropped some new stuff that I am a big fan of. So be sure to go to thecrypticcloset.com, use promo code DEFEND at checkout. And without further ado, let's talk about Without a Paddle. I, I guarantee the last time I saw this movie was the year it came out. And I remember walking away from it and being like, yeah, that was that was like fine. Like, I didn't really think about it much afterwards. And I'm kind of glad you made me rewatch this because <laughs> I think I love it. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to like. There's as much to not like as there is to like in there. Oh. Yeah. And like, 
for a movie that came out in 2004, like especially a comedy, I was like, oh, there's probably going to be a lot of problematic jokes in this by today's standards. And mm-hmm. I was surprised that there's not as many as I expected. Um, only kind of one in particular that I was just like, or one moment in particular, I was just like, ooh, and it's it's the the laser sight joke. Uh, I may have a, a few more, but yeah, yeah the laser sight. <laughs> Funny in 2004, today, not so much. Yeah, and um, I mean, I, I would definitely describe this movie as maybe the peak of Bubba Sparks' career because he is all over the soundtrack and its I don't even know if anybody even remembers him anymore. <laughs> but uh, the one song, I think the song Deliverance, I think it was called, that was like huge back then. And I remember it being like a big deal in this movie. And that, that- I, I noticed it again watching this. I'm like, oh, this is probably the peak of his career is this film. Well, that's the that's the one that plays like once when they're on the road and again at the ending. Yeah, when everything's wrapping up. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great song. Yeah, and a, a great use of it too. And it feel I don't know if the song was written for this movie. I doubt it was, but it feels like it should have been. <laughs> uh, and I think he has one more in there. It's I can't remember what part. It's like kind of somewhere in the middle, but uh. I was just like, oh god, yeah, I totally forgot about that, and it it fits the movie really well. Like I, you know, a good little like, hey, they're driving montage song. <laughs> but I I definitely like thought the movie was funnier than I remember, which is always surprising for a comedy because I think most people will admit that comedy ages poorly. Yeah, but I like the uh, problematic stuff aside. I feel like a lot of the jokes are just situational humor and. <laughs> Um, like Dak Shepard's character in particular was funnier than I remember because he's, he's just kind of like the the fuck up of the group and like I, I love the whole bits about him lying all the time and then even <laughs> when he's just like like oh no like I can do this or this or whatever and like is that true he's like no I lied about that too I'll probably touch on that because sometimes he is right because he is able to catch a fish with just a flashlight yeah and you honestly, don't know when he's you don't know when he's bullshitting and when he's not. Yeah, and it it really works. And like, like I will say, I I I think all of the characters are pretty fleshed out and legitimately like all of them for different reasons. Um, and I I do th- I do think like it, it's you know this movie's not breaking any new ground. Like even in two thousand four when it came out, it's like oh it's it's a pretty standard like buddy comedy film. But I don't know, like there are elements about it specifically with uh, Matthew Lillard's character that I really related to watching it in 2021, especially as somebody who's like, oh, like I'm I'm the age they were probably supposed to be in this movie now. And I'm, you know, me and my wife are like trying to start a family and stuff like that. So his his like arc in particular, like really resonated with me this time around. Uh, Same. (laughs) I'm near that age, too, now yeah um but yeah like there was a couple moments that legitimately got like belly laughs out of me and one of them was when they were launching the boat and he just like christens it with the beer bottle and the guy's like oh thanks for breaking glass for my kids play (laughs) such a good one yeah like i'm i was watching this at work and i have i have headphones in and i'm you Mm -hmm. know because i'm 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 in one spot but kind of moving around in one spot and it's a little loud there, but we can still hear each other, especially working on today. We're recording on a Saturday. There's not as many people there. And I just start like cracking up and I just see everyone like looking over at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, are, well, are we like we're there? Reco- we're recording right now. Are we is this going to be in the final or is this going to be like, oh, this is the episode. The oh, this is the episode. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> No, we've right, been going. Not, that's right. We're not worried about, like you said, we're not worrying about intros right now. <laughs> no, no, sorry. I just need to take a sip of water. Um, was was pretty surprised that in two thousand four we're still getting Matrix parodies. <laughs> in in like, it's like oh yeah, ma- parodying the Matrix was a thing. Yeah, like I understand that movie was like 98, 99, but I think the sequels were 2002 and 2003, so they weren't like far removed, but it's they were, it's they were both 2003. 
Were they both 2003? Because I know they yep. came out months apart, but I thought one of them was like towards the end of the year. I couldn't remember. But like, you know, they're parodying the first one, which was 99. And like, it's it's so bizarre. Like, I forgot that that was a time period of where just every comedy was like doing that. And by like the little add on they do with Seth Green, like calling it out. And then, yeah, like, oh, my back. <laughs> yeah. It's just the it's the little things. Yeah, like something I, I I just definitely wasn't expecting it watching this movie because it's also the one moment I would say in the movie that just completely shatters reality. I feel like other than that, it's just you're you're pretty standard, like com like slapsticky kind of comedy at points. But that's the one moment I was like, oh no, we're just completely shattering the fourth wall and referencing <laughs> a different movie and like something that would absolutely not be possible just because these characters are stoned. But um, like so, like, what was your relationship with the movie? Is this one you've revisited multiple times over the years? Uh, this has been a movie that I remember, ironically or fat, funnel, funnily enough, I remember watching it a lot when I was camping with my my family and whatnot when I was younger. Because I was like, "Well, I'm bored camping. There's nothing to do." I got the portable DVD player. Might as well put on the camping movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, and that, yeah, that's a good point. It would be a good, fun movie to watch camping. And I, I can't think of many other movies that might fall into this category. Yeah, I just remember always having a good time with it. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, Is this was the first time I remember seeing Dax Shepard in anything. Same. And I'm same. trying to think of like what was like the start of his career. Because he seems like, okay, it was like his third movie, looking at his Wikipedia. Before this, it was like Cheaper by the Dozen and something I'd never heard of, where he was guy vomiting at party. <laughs> so, it, yeah, like he he's one of those actors that I've always like... Uh, been kind of so-so on whenever he pops up in anything like I feel like he can be really funny but sometimes he just falls flat for me mm. and he's he's kind of one of those actors I've always appreciated more in like smaller roles um, but like re-watching this today I was like oh he actually has most of the funnier lines in the movie yeah, I, I remember, like, com especially compared to Seth Green and Matthew Lillard, like, trying to figure out what else he's been in. And it's like, oh, is it is it him not being a good actor? Or is it, like, no, it's not that. It's just him probably, like, his agent or whoever, like, he's just not getting the right parts. But going back to this, yeah, it's amazing how many good lines he has. Like, he's like, all right, let's go back to town. Let's just jump up this 100 foot waterfall let's run past our bait <laughs> our friend the bear let's call on the sheriff he remembers us and oh hey there's a beer in the river cool Ooh, it's yeah. still cold <laughs> <laughs> yeah well and then when he shows up at the funeral and he's just kind of like being an ass he's like yo is this the funeral is that the corpse in there and he's like where'd you guys park <laughs> like he's just completely disrupting the whole thing and just not caring so like it, it is interesting because like Matthew Lillard, I think is he's I most people know who he is, but I feel like outside of like Scream and the Scooby Doo movies, he's and hackers he has, and hackers, yeah, my favorite nineties movie. Um, Hack he doesn't, planet. yeah, he he doesn't have like this huge notable career. He's just like a guy who's been in a lot of stuff, and like oh, you remember him from one of those like three movies. But like I, I really enjoy him as an actor, and I think this is a movie he. I, I hope he should. Hmm, how do I say this? He should get more credit for. I would say. Yeah, because I yeah. think he's actually doing pretty good in this. Yeah, he gets to have some somber moments, which you don't usually see from him. Yeah, he he is. I mean, they all have comedic moments, but he's definitely more of the straight man. And even Seth Green like is a little more um, like reserved than he normally is, but that, I mean that's because of the, his character's nature. Yeah. Also, can I just say, uh, whenever you see like group shots of all three of together, all I, I I wrote this twice down as a <laughs> note, but damn, is Seth Green just the shortest man alive? 
Oh yeah, like I'm I'm pretty sure Matthew Lillard is like almost like six five or something. So he's ab- above average, and I think Dak Shepard is too. So it's, he could very well just be an average size person and just like look like a dwarf next to them. But I think he is a little on the shorter side in real life. Uh, but when they're uh, especially when they're in the opening when they're saying goodbye to Billy and you see Dak Shepard and he's hunt. It looks like he's hunching over to make himself not look as tall. Yeah, it it, it is interesting that like you you kind of put your cast together just these two giants and then this little guy. But I will say I think that's one thing the script does really well is it feels like whether it happened before they were involved or afterwards that it was kind of written around the actors. Uh, like Seth Green gets a lot of Star Wars references, and I I think knowing the history of him with like robot chicken and just like his like nerddom it feels like something that was added in the movie because seth green was in the movie (laughs) and so i do wonder because there's there's a lot of references to him being shorter and like it plays into like the big finale of the movie where he's the only one that can squeeze through the hole and stuff i do wonder if a lot of that was changed after the fact like Uh, going um piggybacking off of that of I, a lot of the script probably being changed to accommodate the actors. I, I watching this again. I and especially since I, I this is gonna go in a weird direction, but stay with me. Especially <laughs> since the especially since this week the first episode of Loki dropped. Okay, I did want to bring this up. I do want to point out as of right now, I have not watched it, but I am aware of what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, for listeners, uh, Jeremy reached out to me. Well, well, Jeremy reached out on the Discord on Tuesday, and I said, "Hey, I could talk about without a paddle." And he's like, "Oh yeah, let's talk about without a paddle." And then, like, uh, and in case you don't know the background of the movie, basically the story is that three friends from childhood they decide to honor their friend's memory and look for um, the briefcase. Like they they, they refer to it as the treasure, but it's just a suitcase treasure. full of money. It's a suitcase from full of money, and it was basically it ties into this real world uh, criminal DB Cooper who parachuted out of a plane with a whole bunch of money. It was never seen again, and it just blew my mind in the watching the first episode of Loki, where the whole DB Cooper incident comes up. Yeah, and it's it's very strange because like a few days before I reached out on the Discord db cooper had just come up at work for some reason i can't even remember (laughs) and that was the thing i completely forgot about this movie that like the plot revolves around that story and so so yeah like i knew the thing was in loki because i mean for one it was in the trailers or and um yeah and then like all my coworkers have watched it but i haven't just because i've been working late and like i'm actually gonna watch it like right after this but Mm -hmm. um i was like oh i i totally forgot that this movie involves that as well and so it's just kind of this weird moment where all these things are correlating at the same time. Yeah, but the reason I br- uh, the other reason I bring up Loki is because Owen Wilson's in that show, and I just watching this movie again, I kept thinking that is it me or does Dax Shepard have a very Owen Wilson like delivery of his lines? Like, say, where yeah, kind of. And I should also point out this movie is directed by Stephen Brill, who right after this directed Drillbit Taylor with Owen Wilson. <laughs> also directed yeah, Little Nick. Like, <laughs> like uh, one of the, one of Dak Shepard's lines, lines at the beginning is like, "Well, hey, I'm thinking I'm thinking about a Tom sandwich right on the Tom." Oh yeah, I'm thinking about like Owen Wilson could say that line or yeah, uh, you were in the Boy Scouts, weren't you? Like, no, but I ate a brownie once. <laughs> And then, which is a joke that totally flew over my head the first time I saw it, and then I got it this time. It could you explain the joke to me, please? Because it still flew over my head. Um, brownies are like the female version of Boy Scouts, uh, but I believe uh, it's an oral okay. sex reference, okay? But uh, and then, yeah, and then also uh, another example of a Owen Wilson esque line for is at the end where. Um, uh, they like part of the plot is them running into DB Cooper's best friend, and it's like, 
I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be moving on, having my own life. I'm gonna travel the states. I might even hit up Washington. <laughs> and then Dak Shepard's like, "Wow, one state over." <laughs> yeah, that stuff was great. Yeah, he does kind of have like this like pause delivery that like Owen Wilson does. And it just made me think what this movie would look like if instead of Matthew Lillard, uh, Seth Green, and Dak Shepard, it was like Vince Vaughn, Ben Stiller, and Owen Wilson. <laughs> I honestly don't like I don't think it would have worked like I think the cast does a lot of the heavy lifting in this movie like, I mean because you know like I said it was it's a movie that's not really doing anything different it's it's just like something we've seen before but I think it's because of the people involved and even outside of the group of friends like uh, I forgot Ethan Suplee was in this movie as one of the guys like hunting them down and uh, I recently started, um, not recently, I guess, well, over the last year, I've been watching My Name is Earl, where he plays Jason Lee's like brother. And I was like, oh, he's this is clearly made kind of around the same time period because his character feels just like slightly smarter version of his My Name is Earl character. <laughs> and uh, I forgot Burt Reynolds was in the movie. And like even when oh, he yeah. showed up at the end, I was like, wait, who was it? I was like, oh, yeah, Burt Reynolds' name was in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I there's just so much I forgot to the point where I was like, man, did I even like watch this the first time? But I mean, it was like a very long time ago. Now, those opening credits are also amazing, by the way. Yeah, they were actually. I just lo love the just really puts you in the mindset of what the movie is going to be about. Yeah, like I, I think the movie is very well written around its characters and I, 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 you know, looking at it, it was a movie made for only like nineteen million dollars, and it made seventy, which is pretty good. But um, I don't know. I think the movie's kind of better than it ever got credit for. Like even to myself, I remember walking away from it of like, yeah, that was fine. But like watching it now, I don't know. There's just something about it that I, I it's it's a comedy. I think I will probably be throwing on more often. Yeah, it's definitely something you put on in the background and maybe tune into it more than you think you would. Yeah, and it was kind of like, it's, it's been my favorite part of doing, I think I've said this almost every recording now, but my favorite part of doing this podcast so far is kind of revisiting these movies I haven't seen in a while and giving them another chance and like or seeing something I've never even seen before but had been meaning to see. And it's nice to kind of like reevaluate something like this yeah, but there's also signs that there this was very much made into the 2000s like when they're out in oregon prepping for their trip and seth green tells matthew Lord, hey you want to call your hey if you need to get in contact with your girlfriend why don't you try my new cell phone oh my god yeah <laughs> they put so much emphasis on this phone which is so quaint which by the way how much did uh, NEC phones pay for their product placement? Whereas, like, yeah, our phone's so durable, a bear can eat it, can be digested, and it'll still be usable. Oh my god, yeah! <laughs> like they probably covered half the budget for this. <laughs> yeah, it's because like, he's even like, ooh, a custom ringtone. Like they they put <laughs> so much like emphasis on this phone. <laughs> Customizing your ringtones was just a flight of fancy yeah that's a four uh, that also, also reminds me when did jurassic park 3 came out because they totally do the same joke uh, was, i want to say if not 99 2001 yeah 2001 yeah because it's literally the same bit where the in that movie the dinosaur eats the satellite phone and that's how they're <laughs> able to track it because it's rigging <laughs> and it's the same thing with the bear in this movie yeah. also did that bear take a selfie because why was the background of the <laughs> during did, matthew did lillard's they... pensive moment why was the background of the phone a bear do they show i i must have missed that uh, he when the when dale's he... uh, shack is getting shot up matthew lillard just lost in his thoughts he's staring at the phone and on the background of the phone is just a picture of <laughs> if not the bear than a bear that's funny i like to imagine that because i don't that, i don't think they ever really use the phone when the bear shows up right like he just eats it out of the bag <laughs> so yeah i do wonder like 
Oh, that would be funny. I wonder if there's like a cut scene or something. Uh, I just love I love the added sound effect of gulp. <laughs> so you know yeah. that bear ate the phone. Uh, it was just re- it was giving me revenant flashbacks. It was like, oh, this is a very different version of a bear attack. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Where's Seth Green's Oscar? He ate raw meat. Oh my god, that was disgusting. He's like, mm, num num, so good. Yeah, but uh, like I, I was, I love revisiting comedies that I still find funny because I, I there yeah. are so many you kind of just bump into. It's like, oh yeah, that wasn't as good as I remember. And like walking away from one of like, oh, that was actually better than I remember is kind of a refreshing feeling because it's not something that happens too often. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm thinking, I'm trying to think about what comedies. I, I am. I'm dreading revisiting stuff like um, Dodgeball, a a true underdog story, or Hmm. uh, Starsky and Hutch, directed by Joker's own Todd Phillips. Is that a good movie? I've never seen Starsky and Hutch. I remember enjoying it. (laughs) I don't know how I'll feel about it, watching it later, knowing that it's directed by the guy who did the Hangover trilogy and Joker. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Dodgeball's probably still pretty good for the most part like there's uh i mean there's pro- definitely probably some problematic stuff in it but i feel like oh, yeah. a, again a lot of it is physical comedy and just ben stiller's character just being over the top yeah ben stiller and dodgeball walked so that chris evans and scott pilgrim could run <laughs> oh my god chris evans is so good i'm not i'm on record as being the not the biggest scott pilgrim fan but I am a big fan of Chris Evans in that movie and Macaulay Culkin's brother in that movie. <laughs> Which I know he has a name. He's not Macaulay Culkin's brother, but I don't know what it is. I'm trying to, right. I'm trying to I'm looking through my notes to see if I have anything here. That's yeah, just I, quotes. I do love the poster that has like Seth Green in the middle of them and at the same height as the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> they too have to have him like standing on the boat. Yeah. I, I don't have it in front of me. Maybe it's just perspective. Oh, here's a here's another good Dak Shepard line when uh, Seth Green's saying that he brought a bunch of astronaut food because it's supposed to be very nutritious. And Dak Shepard's like, I'm not an astronaut. I'm an American. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. Like, I forgot how many good lines there are in this. Even... Uh, like the guy who gives him the boat was like, yeah, there's a transponder on the boat, so at least if you die, we can get our boat back. <laughs> I'm also seeing that Frank Welker, who's, I believe, what, the voice of Optimus Prime, right? Uh, um, Megatron. Megatron. Voice the bear, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always weird to me when you see that in movies where actors are actually voicing over, like, animals. Because I know... Um, what is it? Uh, Alan Tudyk is in every Disney animation movie, right? And he's just like the chicken in Moana. You right? He's hey hey. Say what? He's hey hey. Hey hey. Is that the chicken name? That's the name of the chicken. Okay, I've only seen it once. I didn't know he had a name. Uh, but yeah, it's like it's 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 always strange to me that like you couldn't just, like you don't pull that from a sound library. You got an actor doing that. You got to pay someone for this. Um, would you would you say the scene with like the hippie girls is maybe problematic nowadays? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I, Seth Green literally says, "Thank you, kind, caring, incredibly hairy woman of my dreams." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I and again, that was something I did kind like I knew was in the movie, but kind of forgot about it until they showed up again. Yeah, uh, this this movie not perfect. It has a very uh, fixed view on women. <laughs> yeah, and there's not many in the movie. It's just those two and like Matthew Lillard's girlfriend, who yeah. is barely in the movie. She, she's she literally says, "I won't play the role of nagging girlfriend anymore." <laughs> yeah, and that's like all she does. <laughs> and Matthew Lillard responds, "Would nagging wife make you better?" <laughs> oh my god. She's like, please tell me that was not a proposal. <laughs> but at the same time, that's just a good response too. Please, tell it me is that's not a proposal. 
<laughs> but it, it like I kind of love how he's just so nonchalant about it. But it, you know, it plays into his character arc where he's just kind of like, I, I just don't care about anything. And like watching yeah, him on the surf. Yeah. Which it, there are like a like things like that where it's like, okay, they show him surfing, they mention him surfing, but it doesn't really play that much into it. Like the whole idea of like he's kind of bored and unsure about his life and you know all these guys just trying to live up to their adventurous friend who passed away um yeah, that's also a weird that's also a weird edit <laughs> when we're introduced to him as an adult it's just cut to him in the boardroom he's like all right do you have a uh, plan on the proposal and, and he's just like uh <laughs> it just cuts to him on the beach scene over yeah he's, he's, like, he's just on. like uh right now and then they don't follow up on the scene it's just like okay well that scene's over it's like okay, yeah. It gives us what we need of like he's he's bored at his job or whatever. But it's it's such an awkward way of getting around that. Also, here's another specific. Here's also a line in the script on what Seth Green thinks marriage is like. He says, like when he's thought when Matt Lillard is talking about how not great things are at home, and Seth Green just responds. It sounds good on your end. I would kill to have a woman at home willing to have sex with me every night. Yeah. And he's <laughs> like, like, when that line happened, I was like, oh, well, he's probably going to say like, oh, it's not really like that. But nope, they just kind of just let nope. that line ride. I was like, oh, yeah, 2004. Yeah. Also, before this movie, have you ever re- heard it referred to as a downstairs? Not in the way they do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is actually a pretty... and even burt reynolds knows it it's like oh yeah this is a universally accepted thing <laughs> yeah but I, I do like it does give us the line at the end of the movie where the kids ask him what's a downstairs <laughs> like that that kind of got me <laughs> um like as far as the stuff that really worked for me is i i love the ending and like how like the revs the resolution of the money like, I think that's really well done of like, hey, everybody kind of gets what they like. Matthew Lillard realizes he wants to live the life that, you know, he's kind of been living and that he does actually enjoy his life. You know, Seth Green finds his courage to kind of get over a lot of his phobias. And the way they just like give him the money was actually kind of like a sweet moment for me that totally worked. And like earlier, they said, you can't you cannot catch a fish with yeah um, with a flashlight flashlight but he does it twice yeah and yeah he's like oh i bet you a hundred grand that in my left nut that all you catch is a cold and then he <laughs> like immediately does it you won't you owe me the hundred grand and the left nut <laughs> yeah and then when he they literally he's like and i like how that plays into like well if i remember correctly i lost a hundred grand to you he's like yeah but you still owe me that nut <laughs> he pulls he pulls out his pocket knife outside a police station yeah (laughs) like i i truly believe like i do wonder if these guys knew each other beforehand because they do kind of come off as pretty close friends in the movie and i buy it like i believe it yeah i I was i remember watching scooby-doo 2 and being disappointed that after seth green was there as like a red herring maybe villain and having scenes with matthew lord or shaggy i was disappointed that oh where's where's dak shepherd I never saw the second one. I didn't know Seth Green popped up in that. Yeah, he is. But apparently now Dak Shepard is directing a Scooby-Doo movie of his own. So, hey. Oh, really? I know he's got a podcast now that's actually pretty successful. I've never listened to it, though. Like, I hear he's, like, actually a super nice dude. Like, in in Hollywood, he's, like, one of those guys. Like, oh, you just kind of hear all these great things about. And I do love. So he's married to, what's her name? Kristen Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. And um, in The Good Place, he has a fun little cameo Ooh. where, like, they're in hell and uh, he is just like a demon there. And they kind of bump into each other and they're just like, Hey, you're pretty cute, aren't you? And she's like, Oh, right back at you. And it's, it's just kind of like this little moment. It's like, Oh, you know, he's, he's showing up because he's her husband or whatever. But it's, it's like a fun little bit. Place. Oh, it's so good. It's, <laughs> it's definitely one of those shows where the finale made me cry. Like, it's, mm. it's really great. And I, I got into it. Um, right when because it's only four seasons and i think i got into it right before season three like debuted so i i like burned through seasons one and two on 
netflix and then watch seasons three and four live and it's it's one of my favorite shows it's real good and it's the show that kind of made me a Kristen bell fan because like i wasn't a big fan of her because i never really watched veronica mars growing up and i'd only seen her in a few movies but watching that show i was like oh i get it now like she's actually really good in the show and one of the actors you never saw you never saw frozen uh i tried (laughs) me and my wife watched like i think well she's seen it a million times now because she takes care of kids but um i we tried watching it when it came out and it was super popular and we got like 30 minutes in we were both just kind of like you want to just shut this off and kind (laughs) of didn't go back to it and yeah like what i saw i was just like i don't know i think like moana's better Uh, maybe and then obviously we've all heard that song probably yep. be in our heads until the day we die. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's if there's any more to say about without a paddle. Like, uh, also there's a lot of gay jokes that didn't age well. <laughs> ah, I give some of those a pass in the sense that when when stuff like that comes out of the bad guys' mouths, it's a little easier to it's like okay well these guys are dicks so like it makes sense um but the the one i was kind of okay with was when they're singing the boy george song and ethan suplee like is a fan of it he's like what i had a new wave phase <laughs> like that that one was like okay you get a pass because you kind of you kind of played that one off <laughs> also the dude's comment of just oh it sounds like the mountains are getting gay but he's like, no, I like this song, man. I kind, I kind of like when Dak Shepard is like, when Seth Green is just having a meltdown in the rain on the mountain. <laughs> oh yeah, he's like, D- Seth Green saying, like, I, "I'm out. I am out of this." He's like, "Oh, I think, I think he's saying he's coming out. Like he's finally admitting he's gay because he just yeah. sounds so earnest. He doesn't sound sarcastic. He sounds earnest when he says it." Yeah, there's a lot of stuff of them just kind of ragging on Seth Green, and I again, it's like those things that make me feel like these guys might have been pretty good friends because like uh, there's that scene, and then there there's another one where oh, like when they're in the tree and. Uh, He's like, oh, we used to jump off the bridge all the time. He's like, I never jumped. You guys always push me. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he just pushes them off the zip line. <laughs> like, stuff like that. I was like, oh, this is actually, like, it, it, I believe it that all these guys would act like this with each other. But, yeah, even his whole speech when he like, gives up, he's just like, no, I'm tired of walking behind sweaty ball sack and sweaty ball sack. He's just like, I'm done. I'm just sitting here. Things cannot possibly get worse. Start raining. Yeah. I stand corrected. Like, and then, and then even Dak when they Shepard all have to huddle together, it's like uh, interesting. First, you mock my sweaty ball sack. Now you want to cuddle with? <laughs> yeah, because they all have to. And uh, and so the scene where they're all huddling together for warmth, and Matthew Lillard starts tricking him into getting a boner is like, <laughs> I I feel like I have friends that would do that. Like it was pretty believable. I mean, like at least like some of my high school friends would have been that way. Which I mean, that's kind of what this is. It's like a bunch of high school friends coming together, like years later. Yeah, pretty pretty much. And like I always, I know, I know when I bump into some of my high school friends, you you there is that old trope, like oh, you always kind of revert back to who you were when you know those people, and I, I feel like some of that is definitely true. Like there are definitely some of my friends who are just like, oh yeah, we were different people. Like we're probably not really cool anymore. But like some of my friends, it's definitely just like you, you get a little crazy again. It's like, oh, I am we eighteen again. We weren't wrapped up in what was cool and uncool, and then they listen more of the song. It's like, wow, oh, this yeah. song is really uncool. <laughs> and he's just like, I like it. I'm blessed with <laughs> with good taste. Blessed with good taste. And it, and again when they're in the car and like turns out turns out Seth Green's a big Dr. Dre fan. He's like, oh, yeah. what? He's a doctor. Doctors study other doctors' work. Yeah. Oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah, this movie's like really enjoyable. Like I do wonder why it's I very charming. Yeah, and I think maybe I was just like too young and just didn't care about like 
you know, in my 30s now, I can't watch a fucking Disney movie without crying at all anymore. <laughs> like anything that has to do with a storyline involving parents or kids, I am just weeping by the end of it. Like that stuff just immediately triggers on me nowadays. And like, honestly, there, there was like a moment in this movie that got me a little like teary eyed. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but I think, I think one of the moments where they're talking about their dead friend and kind of in the situation they're in, I'm like, this is a character that didn't have like any screen time in this film, but I understand like these dudes like feeling for this guy. Also uh, props to the the actor playing their friend Anthony Starr for just lucking out 15 years later who who is oh god that's uh, homelander yeah oh my god i did not know this was him yeah i mean it's cuz they only show him for like 5 minutes i the good thing i had the wikipedia open yeah but when i, when I saw him it was like wait a minute i <laughs> pull up wikipedia i was like uh it's homelander oh my god yeah playing one of the scariest fucking characters on a TV show right now. He's one of the sweetest boys in this movie. Yeah. And I do love like all the references they make to it. And like at his funeral, the woman's like on his casket, just like, why did you leave me? And he's like, uh, even in death, this guy's going to get laid more than I will. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That kind of blew my mind. I love <laughs> that shit. When like somebody is like huge now and you're like, Oh, remember when they did this little thing? Yeah, yeah, I was like, going fun. Through, I was going through the cast, and there are like not many names I knew outside of like the main people. I, I do love that the bear has a Wikipedia page, though. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, his, his name is Bart the Bear. Let's see what he's done. He was in Doctor Doolittle Two, um, Evan Almighty. Looks like he's done it. Yeah, he's like a bear that's just been in a lot of movies. He was in Zookeeper. We bought a zoo. Something called Into the Grizzly Maze, which I feel like I've seen this poster before. <laughs> yeah, he's he's oh he's, he's an episode of Scrubs, one of my favorite shows. Oh, well, oh wow. Game of Thrones. <laughs> so he's been around. He's an old bear. Yeah, looks like his most recent date was 2015. I'm trying to because it wasn't. Uh, I want to say the bear in what was that movie? It's a Will Ferrell movie, the basketball one, Semi Pro. I want to say that bear ended up like maybe killing somebody. And I was wondering Oof. if it was the same bear. I want to, I don't know if it was semi pro. I'm pretty sure there was like a bear who did a movie that ended up like killing its trainer or something like years later. Oof. Uh, I, I thought I'm thinking about uh, other stuff I'm not a big fan of. I guess I'm getting tired of good old boys being the villains. Like, yeah, even by this point, that was a pretty tired trope. Yeah, yeah. This is like maybe maybe it's because of the day and age we we're watching it. But I was just like, ah, I wish they were Nazis because uh, <laughs> the my we name can is all Earl. relate to. Yeah, because the my name is Earl guy is also he is also in uh, American History X. Is he really? Yeah, he's the fat Nazi. Oh God, I've only seen that. I have not seen that since high school. So yeah, he's the guy who see who sings "Glory, Glory, Hallelujah" with Nazi lyrics. Oh God, man, <laughs> that, that man, that's one I should revisit. Yeah, I mean he's he's been in so much stuff, but yeah, like that's yeah, it's. I, I guess it makes sense for like movies with people lost out in the woods, but like it, it does feel really tired. It, it could have literally been anything. They just wrote it that way. And I mean, there is the twist that they actually work for the cop. Like, technically, the cop is like kind of the bad guy of the movie. Yeah, that, that's something that it doesn't feel as surprising anymore. The cop is the bad guy. Oh, they absolutely. The wall. I was I was talking to a friend recently about. Um, isn't it weird that in old action movies and stuff, the internal affairs people are always viewed as the bad guys? And now I'm like, oh, no, like those are the people I should be rooting for. <laughs> Like get these shitty cops out of here. <laughs> also, the also the what makes the bad guys bad is that they're <gasps> marijuana farmers. Oh yeah, that felt very dated. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, don't tell don't tell my patients I smoke because then they're gonna think I'm a stoner and I'm gonna yeah. lose my license. Uh, this is the which, worst thing that could happen to me. Which one thing that did surprise me is he does say I'll write you a prescription. So I was like, oh well, <laughs> medical marijuana is already a thing. Because I, I couldn't remember like the time frame 
of like all that stuff kind of happening but yeah like I, I do enjoy the moment where the field burns down, but they show the the shot of them like, oh, I think the field's mostly okay. But then they move the plant and it's all burned <laughs> beyond that. And uh, we we get the stoner puppies. Oh, yeah, that was actually the first moment that made me like belly laugh. It was just the dogs laying on their backs and they're just like, what are they staring at looking up at the sky? <laughs> that actually it got also, me. It also leads to a good another good Dak Shepherd line. It's like, hey. These guys are pot dealers. Like, what makes you say that? <laughs> well, except there are Yeah, supply. they just turn around and it's just like uh, big freaking like packages of it, which he's trying to steal as they're leaving. Like again with this uh with the whole pot farming being kind of out of date, it's like they didn't have to shoot at them. They probably could have talked their way out of it. Yeah, it it seems so extreme. And like, I feel like even for 2004, they're like, oh, no, we need to kill you because you saw us growing weed. <laughs> and it's like, do you think they'd really care? It's like, no, nah, man, you do you. Just please help us get home. <laughs> it, yeah, that, that was we, like, we can't trust them, though. They fish with dynamite. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's kind of the thing. Like, okay, so they're <laughs> they're blowing up fish. Like, do we really? The, are these people we need to avoid for that reason? Like, like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't like what you do, but like, just you don't have to kill me. I thought that, that was another good line from one of, one of them. He's like, he's like, what, what what would happen if I just held on to this? I think we'd both die. I would. <laughs> What if I toss it to you? Then what? Yeah, and I do like I do like the bit with a grenade. Um, <laughs> hey, there's a grenade up here. Yeah, everybody no at the same time, but also like when uh, Matthew Lillard pulls the grenade and Ethan Suplee just leans into the cop like that's my grenade. I'm sorry, that is, that is my grenade. <laughs> Give me back my grenade. <laughs> Which is interesting that this cop ends up being the main villain. It's like, oh, this dude has like four minutes of total screen time. Yeah, uh, they, they they just needed a more credible bad guy, I guess. Yeah. For the last three minutes. It, it is one of those things where it's like, well, I guess the movie has to have a bad guy. And I mean, those guys were fine. Like, it didn't need to have this extra layer to it. Uh, but Two two good old boys can't be the main villains. They're not credible enough. Yeah, I guess. Like, oh, they couldn't run a whole operation by themselves. Yeah. But uh, I and you could argue it's like, oh, well, then it turns them into like, which they do call them local heroes. But it's like, oh, these guys aren't local to this area. Oh. But um, it's like you don't do anything with that with the ending. Like, it'd be different if like, oh, because he's a hero, maybe Matthew Lillard's girlfriend's like all impressed by it or something. But and then I don't know that probably wouldn't be good for her story development either. Like it makes more sense for him to kind of like grow up, but they just they just don't really do anything with it. I'm trying, I'm trying to think how that could have been better handled. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because I, I feel like just them, you know, getting away and then getting the money from Burt Reynolds is kind of the main points that you need. And then, yeah, it does give us that one state over joke, which was one of my favorite lines of the movie. Oh, another good line from the end of that was like, remember, carry your, fr- carry your friends wherever you go. And Seth Green's like, close to your heart. Or, and Burt Reynolds like, or on your back, I got DB's bones in my sack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're going to give him a proper burial. God, I can't believe I didn't remember the DB Cooper thing. It's so like... <laughs> I love that that's the thing they chose because it's such a like they're not something that everybody I would say knows about. All right, this is how this movie is how I learned about who DB Cooper was, what he did. Uh, for me, it was probably like a random YouTube video or like uh, just like Googling or like wiki- falling down Wikipedia holes because I definitely like knew about it a long time ago. I do wonder if maybe. It was like after this movie, though, and I just never put them together. I don't know. I don't even know when Wikipedia started. Was Wikipedia around in 2004? I would assume. 
Also, I don't know if this is a positive or, or a negative in the movie's favor, but when they are all at, in their underwear in the cave, I'm just thinking, wow, so this is what 2000s ripped look. look. This is what it looked like to be <laughs> ripped in the 2000s. Yeah, just kind of like not chubby. Yeah, but then, I mean, they're, they're all lean, which is doesn't seem as unhealthy as uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth eating up oh, but broccoli and unsalted chicken. God, you see those freaking pictures from the new Thor movie, how big Ugh. his arms are right now? <laughs> Him and Natalie Portman. <laughs> oh, I didn't see anything from her. Is she ripped right now? It was a while ago, but I could have sworn I saw her like having like massive pythons too. Oh my god! Well, I know he's also getting ready to do that Hulk Hogan movie, so I wonder if he's getting just like super jacked to look bigger as Hulk Hogan. Oh wow! <laughs> I didn't know that was happening. I didn't know Chris yeah. Hemsworth was playing Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing that's allegedly happening. I'm not sure. I assume that's probably his next thing after Thor. Because I know they were talking about it recently, and it's you know it's going to be a very Hollywood watered down version without all the racism. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, when I when I saw the picture they put out of him and uh, Taika Waititi, I was, that's all I was thinking is like, oh my god, his arms are just ginormous in that picture. I'm surprised there haven't been any memes of going around being like, first he was Thor, now he's the Hulkster. <laughs> oh god. And like, are they gonna give him like a really shitty like receding hairline for that movie? I want to see his handlebar mustache. Oh, that'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it remains a scene if that ever happens. But I think if he's involved, it's probably gonna happen. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Is there is there anything else for without a paddle? Uh, the hippies do have one good line when they're introducing themselves. Like, my name is Flower. You call me <laughs> Butterfly. And if you're with the logging company, you'll have to speak to our lawyers. Yeah, I did like that. <laughs> <laughs> I also liked, uh, what's your forest name? And Dak Shepard's just like, oh, yeah, he's Slug. And then later, I think you catch uh, Seth Green's as Condor. Did he catch what uh, Dak Shepard's forest name is? No. It's Mighty Oak. Mighty Oak. <laughs> Mighty Oak can go for some nurturing. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're like, oh, yeah, take your clothes off. Well, he's just like stripping down immediately. <laughs> like, I, I might go on on a limb and say this is maybe Dak Shepard's funniest movie. Like, Idiocracy, I like. I know yeah, I remember, that that movie has like a cult following. Yeah, he had a. I remember him getting a lot of trailer moments, like the whole thing with the bears. Like, Stay calm. It's important you don't let them smell your fear. Yeah. It's a bear. We're all going to die. Yeah. Stay in the fetal position. It won't it hurt you if you're in the fetal position. Abort the fetal position. It's Abort the fetal. Working. Yeah, that's a moment I actually remember from the trailer. Yeah, because like, he's he's done like some stuff. Like, I know Baby Mama was another one. That's like my wife really likes that movie. And yeah, like Idiocracy, I think, is the the only other movie aside from this one that I would say is like really funny for him. He's one of the only good parts in employee of the month, that Dane cook movie. Oh yeah. He's like the villain of that movie, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. This is an 81 Honda. How dare you? <laughs> it isn't his like buddy, the guy from um, what's it called? The Napoleon dynamite or something. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I only saw that like once. Yeah, I, I remember the 81 Honda bit. And I remember at the very end where he's, where he's telling Tessa Simpson, look, listen, I love you. And I'm going to fight for your honor out there today to become next employer of the month. And he runs off and Jessica Simpson's just standing there, not knowing what to do with that information. Yeah. That is, he like learning to rollerblade to look cool in that movie. And he's just like, can't do it. Uh, I think if you swapped D uh, Dane Cook and Dax Shepard in their roles in that movie i think that movie would be more remembered honestly that's a pretty good idea <laughs> like i i liked like dane cook's like first two like comedy albums which is when most people like kind of discovered mm -hmm. that dude but yeah like as a movie actor he never really took off 
I think his peak was Waffle Man. In, uh, oh, Mr. yeah. Man. Which I think was like his first like bit in a movie, too. Yep. Uh, the Waffler. Golden Crispy, bad guy's history. Which I think was like all uh, ad-libbed as well. I think I listened <laughs> to him tell a story about that on a podcast. I will say he is a very fascinating person just like in like he's had a really interesting personal life i don't know if you've heard the stories about like his brother like robbing him and stuff oh no uh so his brother was his business manager and stole all of his money essentially like him and his (laughs) wife and then he yeah he like eventually got arrested and they never found the money like they don't know where he hid it so like he is he essentially went from being a multi-millionaire to having only the money he had in like stocks and stuff and he, Oof. the way he recovered his fortune was he pulled that money, he cashed in the stocks and rented an arena like himself and then put on shows. And then he would use the profits from that show to then rent out another arena. Put And since he was renting them out personally, he was getting all the profit. And he just did like arena tours, funding <laughs> it himself. And like, he's a really smart business guy, actually. Oh, good, but, good for him in that aspect. Yeah, but very problematic in some other ways. And just yeah. like some people, you know, his comedy is what it is. Yeah. But, Much uh, like without a paddle. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's it's not a movie that's going to blow you away. But like, it, I think it's one if you saw it back then and kind of forgot about it, it's worth revisiting, I would honestly say. Like, I don't I don't even know if this is streaming anywhere. I honestly just like bought it. <laughs> but um it's i i honestly was surprised at how much i laughed like out loud at it Mm -hmm. like to the point where people like i said i was watching at work and people were like looking at me and yeah the moment with the dogs i think was the first one (laughs) like it it, all puppies under they were cute too (laughs) like it's it's certainly dated but i i do think like from a humor standpoint a lot of the comedy still holds up just because it is like more situational and like I yeah. as far, as far as stuff that is problematic in the movie, I've seen much worse <laughs> from that era. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think it holds up more so than some of those other ones. Definitely. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. Do you have any closing thoughts on Without a Paddle? Uh, uh oh. Uh, one thing I did want mention before our wrapping up. So. Uh, this may mean this may mean more to me than I do. You, uh, did you watch Cartoon Network when you were younger? Oh yeah, it's con- religiously. Um, what, what what was your cutoff point? Um, I mean, I, I I watched a lot of like I don't remember the years of the stuff, but it was like you know Dexter's Lab, Courage the Cowardly Dog, uh, you know that kind of era, like Johnny Bravo and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, did you ever watch Ed, Ed, and Nettie? Oh, yes. I was a huge Ed, Ed, and Eddie fan. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, this is an Ed, Ed, and Eddie movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It kind of is. Because you got the the tall, strong, dumb one. You got the smart one who's all in his neuroses. And you got the wisecracking one who's always looking for the next big uh, moneymaker. Son of a bitch. Like, and is always lying about how accomplished he is. <laughs> That's absolutely cr- How did we not bring this up early? <laughs> I now view this canonically as an Ed, Ed, and Eddie grown up movie. Yeah. Like, holy <laughs> shit. That is a thousand percent accurate. And then there's the fourth guy who was like the best of all of them, only in the show, it turned out not to be the case. Yeah. Wait. Was there? Was there like a fourth? Who? Who would the the character? Eddie's the brother. I don't remember Eddie's brother. I, I, um, like Eddie always talked up how great his brother was, and we finally oh, yeah, get to he... see him in the big picture show. Oh, really? They do show him eventually. Okay, I do remember yep. them always talking about his brother. I'm not gonna spoil anything else because you got. Uh, it's best to watch it on your own. I, yeah, I might have to seek that out. I I do not remember that. And yeah. I also was not aware of the big picture show. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't blame you because the big picture show came out in like 2009. Really? Yeah, and the yeah, show and first in... aired in like Australia. Oh, interesting! Wow, that's fascinating. I'm I, now I know what I'm doing after the podcast. I got to look up some stuff. Yeah, 
and so I, I know all of, I know the all the TV show of Identity is on HBO Max, but it's none of the holiday episodes and not the big picture show. So you're going to have to really scrounge for it, but it's yeah. worth it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm going to find that because first of all, I love that show, but <laughs> very good. Oh man, that really makes me look at this movie a different way. And I, <laughs> I was actually, cause like uh, the day before you suggested this movie, it had come up with me and a coworker of like, he was talking about something and I kind of like walked into the conversation and somebody had mentioned without a paddle and he's like, Oh yeah, I remember it being great. I was like, yeah, I remember it being okay. And we, yeah, we were just talking about it. And then I told him I was going to be watching it, but now I want to give him this theory and see what he says. <laughs> Cause that literally just changed my entire perspective of this movie. Excellent. <laughs> so yeah, that's, Without a Paddle, starring Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <laughs> uh, changed their names to Jerry, Dan, and Tom. Yeah. That was, it was a licensing thing. It's a spiritual sequel. Exactly. Uh, like, I've been reading, they they made comics for aliens, like, after the movies, but they, I guess I don't think they had license or something, or they changed something. So instead of Hicks and Newt, it's Wilkes and something else. Billy, I think they call her. But it's like older versions of those characters. And it's supposed to be a continuation of the story. They just couldn't use the names. And it's just very uh, bizarre. Uh, also, another reason this is an edit and Eddie movie. Uh, they fall from like 10 foot, 20 foot rapids and are just fine. Oh, yeah. Like nobody gets seriously injured in this movie at any point. Dax like, Shepard literally the... takes a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't notice it till later. No, he's just like, oh, that'll be an awesome scar. Yeah. <laughs> I got the very end where they're being threatened with either being shot or jumping over the cliff into the river. I'm just thinking, just jump into the river. You'll probably be fine. Yeah, you guys have survived this already. (laughs) Yeah, one of you can matrix out of a situation. Yeah, they literally shoot right at him and he it's not like a like a timing thing. He literally just bullet dodges. Uh, that's maybe the one thing I would have took out of the movie. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't fit with all the other jokes. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you this... take out the Matrix stuff, uh, you write more, you you don't underwrite the uh, women and you take out the gay jokes. Like we didn't talk about it, but when they're getting dressed in Dale's cabin, and he's like, you boys better hurry up. I've been alone for 30 oh, years. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, there are more references to it than I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Again, again I've seen worse, but there's definitely some stuff that could have used another pass. Like, I will, I'm willing to bet that this uh, this has aged better than Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back, and I remember oh, absolutely. loving that movie. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Kevin Smith fan, but that is his thing yeah yeah it's uh definitely or even like the the freaking like american pie movies which would have been huge at this time like that is stifler's (laughs) entire character just calling other people gay (sighs) well at least no one dropped the other f-bomb like uh, the oh yeah serious movie (laughs) yeah and honestly i was waiting for it and i guess that's kind of why some of it didn't really strike me as much is because I was expecting it to be much worse and it was a lot more tame than I expected. So I guess, I guess it fared a little better for that reason, just because like my expectations are like, all right, let's prepare myself for some really bad early two thousands stuff. And it, it was a lot more tame than some of the movies I've seen recently. Also uh, one last thing I we mentioned that the opening is good. I didn't like how, the opening ends with like there's this big jump they all take when they're kids and three of them make it and Dan just falls into the river. I, yeah. I, I would have liked more differentiation to, to a set better fitting of their personalities. Like Billy makes it. Um, Matthew Lillard's kid. He almost makes it. It has to like get off his bike afterwards. Cause like, ah, I think I pulled something. Um, Seth Green's kid falls into the river and Dax Shepard just totally peels out, whips it, like crashes off the bike. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, it, they kind of treat Seth Green a little one note for like most of the movie. Yeah. And like yeah. even when he does kind of like redeem himself a little bit, it's the, it's it's not like some big blown out moment. Yeah, I kind of I, I I didn't like how they just dumped on him cuz he's a nerd. Yeah. But it's even even Dak Shepard's like, yeah, you're a doctor. Like you make a lot more money than all of us. And he's just like, yeah, it's not all you guys think it's cracked up to be. But yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, I'm I'm very good time. I'm glad you suggested this. And because like I, I honestly I honestly don't know if anything would have brought me to like watch this again. And like now I think it's like, oh, I actually think I would sit down and just choose to throw it on in the background or something. Yeah. Yeah. Is a this is a nice excuse to give it another go and just enjoy myself. Yeah, because yeah, like I said, I probably hadn't seen it since two thousand four. So I I enjoyed my revisit. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So before we get out of here, do you want to like plug any social media or anything you got? Uh, Yeah, Uh, I've done a few pitches for the Film Rescue podcast. You can find that wherever podcasts are. Uh, casting <laughs> uh i've got reddit which is, i got a reddit which is u slash m y c k o u n t i mostly do a lot of uh similar stuff to film rescue show where i like want make one small change or something like eh, this would have been better if this had happened yeah and i also got my twitter m y c k n i c so you can just hit me up there if you're interested and my if you want to follow me on discord my discord number is where is discord it is why is it not popping up uh, where the number i just had they just were here a while ago <laughs> it's like it's either zero six seven zero or zero seven six zero it's yeah zero seven six zero okay good so i still had our chat open so i was able to get (laughs) all right yeah that's all for me yeah uh and you can follow our show at all the at the twitters and instagrams all we got so far is at defending movie and my personal instagram at uh at advent underscore crash but uh, hey, man, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. And uh, I'm glad to be on. Yeah, having me revisit this, uh, this fun little movie. But I'm glad. Uh, like I said, I'm just <laughs> happy to watch it again. Yeah. And I'd, and... I'd be happy to come on like uh, da- somewhere down the line. Yeah, for sure. you, actually, you actually mentioned another movie earlier. What was it that I was actually in my head? I was like, oh, that would actually be really great. Um, shit, you said it. I don't know. We won't spoil it. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Right, we'll go back Go back through the uh, recording. The, yeah, the pre-recording. But yeah, there was definitely something I was like, oh, that would actually be a really good one because that's one I would want to talk about. But we'll, we'll figure that out. And yeah, I'll definitely have you back, man. Nice. All right, but thank you for stopping by and Mm -hmm. thank everybody for listening.